and oh great um sorry something just happened on my screen um and i'm really uh thrilled that in this town hall we're moving to a new a new system so um previously they you may have seen me chairing one of these meetings um but we are now with some funding from the wick award moving to a system by which every six months we have two um new co-chairs who are going to be leading this system and helping us organize them and make them tons better so we've got david and caitlin who are beautifully positioned actually on my screen in either corner i hope that they're the same for you because it's, it's very it's very pleasing for me to look at um, and they're gonna um lead the next town halls for the kind of next six months at which point we'll recruit a new cohort of local young people to do so who will be handed over to and uh, trained by david and caitlin um, who will gather lots of experience throughout this time um, so yeah we're thrilled to have them here i think they're going to be massive assets so um i will be doing tech and stuff in the background if you have any tech related questions please message me in the chat. Um, otherwise, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hand over to, to Caitlin, who's gonna take us through this town hall. Hi, uh, yeah, so my name's Caitlin. Um, yeah, I'm involved in a few different community things. So I'm the chair of the Legacy Youth Board, which is the LLDC's Youth Board. Um, I take part in a history project called uh, Young Historians Project and a few other different things. And I'll just let David introduce himself. Yeah, hey everyone. Um, so yeah, my name's David, um, what do I do? Uh, I'm an architectural designer, but also uh, run a think tank with a few, few other directors, looking at how we highlight silent conflicts in neighborhoods and design solutions towards it. So that's pretty much, pretty much us. Yeah, nice to meet you all. Great, so uh, I'm just going to ex uh, explain a little bit about what a town hall is. Um, so, and I'm sure most of you know already, but it's a chance for us to get together, work through issues or topics like concern, um, and discuss, listen and be heard and possibly make some plans. And so the Hackney Wick Town Hall is not something that comes with an agenda. The, facilitated by local people, curated by local people. The topics are decided on the day by the people who come. And so it may seem a bit like uh, chaotic, but it's really organized and it allows us to pull similar topics together. And you can take part as in as many discussions as you want or as few as you want. And everybody can decide on clear outcomes, actions and next steps. Um, and so I, it might be a good chance now for people to introduce themselves and say hellos and um, for everyone else to just say hello and how they're doing today. Um, and I, Polly's in the corner of my screen, the first square, so I'm just gonna throw it to Polly and then possibly you could nominate someone else. Hello, lovely to see everyone. Um, yeah, we're, we're small but beautifully formed and um, yeah, I hope you had a lovely day in the snow yesterday and it's great to be here. Oh, I'm going to nominate um, Andrina to speak next. Andrina, you're on mute. That was such lovely waving, but we didn't. I was doing tonight. some brilliant waving, wasn't I, Luke? I was just saying I'm here. I have a camera. Um, I have a voice, uh, but I'm also trying to write a report. So uh, I, I'm dipping in and out, but I'm Andrina. I work for Church Army, but live and focus in my area in Hackney Wick and pleased to be here and pass on to Dave. Uh, my name is Dave. Um, nice to be passed on by the Church Army. I'm a vicar. Um, I'm based um, in partly in St Paul's Old Ford in Bow, but also I have a boat in the Olympic Park called St Columba, which we've been trying to establish a community, which is made slightly harder on a very small venue when no one's allowed to meet but hopefully come spring we're doing stuff online but hopefully on spring we'll be more present in the area as well i nominate ellie hi i'm ellie this is my first town hall um, i've been prompted to come by nick sharman he keeps telling us all how brilliant it is so no pressure people i nominate katrina Hi, I'm Katrina. I'm a neighbour of Ellie's and I know Polly from volunteering in the summer and uh, spring during lockdown. And yeah, I've been a Hackney Week resident for a while and I attended one 
town hall meeting before when it was in person sitting outside uh, the old club. I nominate uh, Justine. Hi, yeah, I'm Justine. I work at Queen Mary University London um, in the Network Centre for Culture and Creative Economy. Um, and yeah, this is my first town hall and I'm kind of here largely driven by curiosity, but also it's um, useful for me and helpful to be to know what's going on, what the concerns are around Hackney, because that's one of the primary areas of focus for um, the Network Centre. Thank you. Uh, great. Um, Sorry, can I nominate Charlie? <laughs> I forgot where the button was. Hi everybody, um, I'm Charlie. Um, I'm the Creative Enterprise Zone Manager for Hackney Wick and Fish Island. So I work for the councils Hackney Tower Hamlets and the LLDC. And I don't live in Hackney Wick. I live nearly in Hackney. I'm in Islington, but the road opposite me is in Hackney. So yeah, stone's throw. And I'm going to nominate Luke. Evening, I'm Luke. Um, I'm a youth community worker at Hackney Quest, a local youth charity. Um, and I was born and grew up in Hackney, but I now live in Tottenham near the Tottenham Stadium, which is a deep cause of anguish for me because I'm an Arsenal fan. Dave's shaking his head quite rightly. Uh, I will pass on to Mr. Matthew Rogers. Thank you, Luke. Um, so my name is Matthew Rogers. I work for Hackney Council. I'm the Area Regeneration Manager. Um, work on most, on most of my projects in Hackney Wick. Uh, no, most of you here. Um, and I would like to nominate Nick, please. Uh, thanks, Matthew. Um, hi, everybody. I'm a um, local councillor for Hackney Wick, one of the three uh, councillors, and also chair the Wick Award, and particularly delighted that this uh, the town hall's off the ground, because it fulfils one of the things we want uh, to make sure the Wick Award does, and that's to make connections between different people in Hackney Wick. So uh, I think this is a great initiative, and we're fully in support, as you've heard. And I'm going to nominate Alex. Thanks, Nick. Hi, everybody. I'm Alex. I'm a local resident. I um, live on Dace Road. I'm also executive chair of the Hackney Wick and Fish Island Community Development Trust, which it aims to secure buildings and spaces for the benefit of the community and to be run by the community for the long term in the area. And I'm going to nominate uh, Bettina. Hello everyone, I'm Bettina, can you hear me? Okay, I'm Bettina, um, I'm currently helping out on the area regeneration team. This is also my first um, Hackney Town Hall, thank you. And I will nominate um, Luke. This, this is the part where it becomes like a quiz show where you've got to work out who hasn't gone. I have gone already. I believe Kathleen hasn't. So I'll pass on to Kathleen. Thank you, Luke. I was be beginning to feel a bit like Billy No Mates. Um, <laughs> I'm Kathleen Wenard and I'm a GP at Ellsdale Street Surgery and also have a role as clinical director for the primary care network, uh, which involves the residents of Hackney Wick, but surgeries including Trowbridge Wick, Ellsdale Well Street Surgery, uh, and Greenhouse. Um, yeah, so I'm really pleased to be here. I nominate Tisha. Hi everyone, I'm Leticia. Uh, I'm not, I don't live in Hackney Week, but I work in Wallis Road in Maynard Studios. Maybe some of you know it, it's basically a workspace. And um, it's just my first one. And uh, I'm just curious to see what we can bring to the community, what it's on already, so I just want to know. Okay. I know okay. Simon, I think he's the last one. He is the last one, you're completely right, yeah. Hello, yeah, um, I, I had nothing in the diary all day apart from this and yet somehow I still managed to forget it was happening. Uh, so apologies for lateness. Yeah, start off doing tours and now doing some work with um, uh, Wick Award. We've got a history, a local history club that we're um, kind of being kiboshed by um, uh, COVID, but hopes to bring people together. 
to um, get them engaged in their area, celebrate the history with their stories, make it for everyone, and also doing a, a bit of fitness work as well um, before the bad weather with people at Chigwell Court, again, thanks to the Wick Award, and um, just trying to do a little bit of, um, be part of, yeah, be part of a great community and give something back to a place that's been very good to me. Great, so thank you everyone and thank you for being here. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna go through some of the actions and minutes from the last meeting and see if anyone wants to give any updates. So the first action we had was on the COVID vaccine. Um, the notes, so a vaccine is coming, lots of unknowns, but the vaccine is looking good, which we now know is a go, it's being circulated. Um, so there was discussions around persuading people to attend vaccine sessions, communicating when the vaccines will be available and there will be a center for vaccines. So people will, will need to get help to get there. So there might be volunteers or, trans or transport may need to be needed. Um, so and there was also discussions worth... around. Sorry, Kading, yeah. it's probably worth updating on that. Um, I don't know if you, should we, do you want to do it now or do we, should we add it onto the agenda? Um, if, uh, if you could give a quick update now, but also in a moment we'll set the agenda and if people want to continue having that discussion, we can do that. Okay, yeah. So exactly as you said, really, it's that we started off at Elm Street um, in, on the 8th of December, but now it's moved to Bocking Lane E8 and everything's basically been ramped up for the vaccination. So we've, we're moving through the, the priority areas of over 80s. I think it's now 75 to 80 has been booked in this week. So you can see they're doing about 500 a day now. So we're moving through those priority areas. We're inviting anyone who can walk in from care homes and then we're going into care homes and um, starting on housebound. Homeless patients from Greenhouse are being invited to Bocking Street regardless of age. Um, so we're kind of moving down quickly through the priority areas of vulnerability, but um, there's still a long way to go. I think there is a big issue in our area or all over Hackney about vaccine hesitancy. So that's one thing I'm keen to talk about. Um, and we're possibly thinking about planning some workshops around that um, because a lot of our most vulnerable groups may are refusing or may continue to refuse. And um, that's obviously some, someone's choice, but it doesn't feel great um, from a healthcare professional perspective. Uh, yeah, so that's 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 the update. And there is the big there is obviously a big center, mass vaccination center, Excel center, but I don't have information about exactly when that's opening. Uh, and VCS, I think I think it's got a lot of volunteers and doing really well, running, you know, actually getting people through. Um, but there's a big team of people in health kind of coordinating it. Health and social care. Yeah, that's it. Thank you for the update, Kathleen. And yeah, that's a topic we can explore more um, later, possibly. Um, so the second uh, topic that was well-being, mental health and supporting the isolated. So people of all backgrounds and ages felt cut off and isolated and a lot of older people felt they were just getting by or just coping. Um, Mikey mentioned an initiative in Poplar for one-to-ones. And so some of the actions were, Alex Russell suggested and working up and walking and Polly and Alex were possibly meeting to explore this. And so if uh, could either of you give an update, possibly Polly, if that's okay. Yep. Yeah. Yes, well, we, we, we had a lovely walk, a walking meeting, which was fantastic and um, covered a lot of ground, which was amazing, sharing information about what organisations are, are doing. And the upshot of what that was that Alex came uh, to a WIC Award meeting and we talked um, and spoke to her, the whole partnership and we talked about possibly um, working together and um, yeah, we're, we're moving on. So we, we, we covered... We did we did talk briefly about isolated people and how to address them, but we we um, moved to a different place um, in, in terms of considering working together in the future. So it was really positive, and I recommend walking meetings in the lovely Hackney Week area for everybody. 
Okay, thank you, Polly. Uh, is there anything you wanted to add, Alex? Or okay, great. Yeah, she covered it. Yeah. Um, the next topic was cycle crime. So there's been a rise of cycle crime in the Hackney area and just generally. And the main message was uh, Lawrence was around and keen to help and needed volunteers to could train up in bike maintenance. So Lawrence was gonna send around information about what was on offer and Catherine was gonna circulate that information from Lawrence. So are there any updates, Catherine? Um, Catherine? Yeah, so I sent those round with the last minutes. Um, so they should be available in the minutes if anyone wants to look at them. Um, and I think that Lawrence got loads of people emailing him trying to get the trying to get the bikes. So yeah, I think it went pretty well. I hope lots of people have bikes now. Great, thank you. Um, that topic was communication. So not everything needing to be virtual, or not everyone having access to the internet and value in face-to-face -face support. And also a physical letterbox communications. There was a discussion around that. And so there was an action for the WIC award to put out key messages and signposting on for info on social media. Um, so yeah, could we get, is, are there any updates, Polly? Um, yeah, I mean, I suppose what we, we're doing very much uh, face to face uh, communication with people who are most isolated by door knocking and having conversations and um, uh, uh, phone ch check in and chat conversations with with buddies. So we're, we're spreading information about the, the support that's available to people in the area via that method and planning a updated newsletter to go out to um, everybody that is on that we know that's vulnerable to um, uh, remind them about access to uh, support services. Great, thank you. Sorry, I was just looking at what you just posted in the chat, um, Catherine. But, uh, yeah, sounds good. Um, so the next uh, gender item from last week was a uh, new WIC space. So on the Hackney WIC Underground. So that was opening two weeks and the website launching soon. And that's probably in accepting volunteers. And there's also due to be a civic curriculum in the space to be a workspace and possibly a uh, shop. And they were keen to engage young people. And so there was an action to let Stour know if there was any ideas or if anything, anyone had any ideas of what could happen in this space. So this is just a general uh, update from anyone if they have anything to share, but if not, I will move on to the next item. No, okay. Um, yep, yeah, so um, six, so that was connecting Hackney Wick with the rest of um, Hackney. So the public realm strategy will was being crafted by an urban design organization soon and the council was finalizing the brief and also LODC was to look into Eastway and Rick Road Junction. Um, a, co a consultation will be part of that work around uh, Eastway and Hackney Rick and one to, it was sorry um, and people should share experiences and feed into ideas and so I was just wondering if Matthew or any other colleagues had any updates around that. Yeah, I can take it. Um, yeah, I think I mentioned at the last meeting that we would be working on the public realm strategy as long as um, we kind of had the, the team available and we weren't redeployed to do COVID um, business cards. But fortunately, we have been, most of the team's been redeployed, um, including a lot of my time doing COVID business response. So most projects have paused, including that public realm strategy. So at some point, um, hopefully later in the summer, we can pick it up again and we, we can get get on with the engagement and working together on that um, but for now it's paused um, but yeah so it's just that's the latest on that. All right great thank you Matthew and finally just for any other business so, so Catherine is becoming Santa for Secret Santa for Hackney Wick and stay tuned so do we have any updates on that or is it still stay tuned? We had a very small Secret Santa but um, it was lovely to have uh, the enthusiasm of a few people was much much appreciated um, next year maybe I'll be Easter Bunny so stay tuned for that. Great, wonderful. 
Um, yeah, and so we're gonna set the agenda for this meeting. I think we have one sort of idea ready, so COVID and vaccines, but does anyone else have any thoughts or topics they would like to discuss? No. I mean, I, I'm, I'm keen as always to hear from any other, I mean, someone just put about sharing best practice, but I'll, are there still any gaps or opportunities that we've missed or for that, that we could fund that I'm sure Polly's got this all under control, but it, as we've got such a kind of big group, it, it, it feels that it, it might still be worth a discussion around, is there anything else we can do for the socially isolated, the vulnerable, um, or fun things, are there any, or is anyone kind of, I know it's all online and it's all knocking on people's doors, but are there any groups that we've missed? Um, I'm aware there, there's loads, so much going on. Um, Polly, what do you think? Or do you think that's worth putting on the agenda or do you think you've got it all covered? No, I think it's very worth putting on the agenda because there are lots of groups, you know, that we, you, you, we miss what who we don't see. There's plenty of people that we don't see. Um, exactly. So although we think we're doing loads, it <laughs> feels like lots, but that we don't we're not seeing who um, who we don't see. So yes, I'd love to have that on the yeah. agenda. Right. Perfect. Matthew, you have a topic as well. You might want to discuss. Sorry. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, the LLDC are, are currently consulting on their nighttime economy um, policies. Um, I think there's a deadline next week, but I thought it might be quite an interesting one to talk about. Um, so, you know, how does, I know it's funny to think about, isn't it, at the moment, but how does the nighttime economy, so bars and clubs and things, how do they work alongside the new residents moving in? You know, what, what are the potential conflicts? How can we see how they can work together, et cetera? Great, thank you, Matthew. And Charlie, you also have a topic that you'd like to raise. Thank you. Um, I've just been thinking a lot about, obviously restrictions are ongoing and kind of opportunities for businesses. So obviously that's kind of my brief, my job is to think about how to support creative businesses in Hackney Wick. Um, but yeah, we did a market before Christmas on White Post Lane and I think that went really well. It was really well attended. There were some really, really great traders. So yeah, we're looking to maybe think about consulting on making something like that permanent, but are there other opportunities? Like, I guess it would be good to hear because there's such a mix of people in the room, it'd be good to hear about like what what's missing, what is kind of missing, not what's missing, that's about what could be added to the area um, to enhance it further in terms of, yeah, opportunities for creative businesses or things that we could all do outside in this weird interim period before life goes back to normal. Good luck making that a concise agenda point, Luke. Great, perfect. So I'm going to hand over to David because um, David's actually getting our agenda points together today. So that was to David. A nice initiation for him. Um, yeah, <laughs> trying to make it literally rationalizing that at the moment. But yeah, so um, I guess we have four agenda topics um, that I'll probably put in the chat um, now, and then we can just literally um, say which ones we're, we feel most interested in within the breakout rooms um, that we'll put you in. So the first one we had was, as mentioned, the COVID vaccine and just that development. Um, the next one was um, basically being able to see what the other uh, other members of the groups are doing and how we can support them. Um, the third was the nighttime economy versus new residents. And lastly, it was uh, how can we make our area better? What, what, what things can be added? Um, so those are the four, four key points, four key agendas. And I'll just put that in the chat. And if, if each of you could just put your um, preferences so your first one and your second one please um i'll do that now one moment Thank you. 
So I think this is now the bit where I will work some tech. Yeah, so um, is this a good place for a break or should we wait until the agenda items are in? I think if people could put whatever room they're interested in, one, two, three or four into the chat, I will assign you to your rooms, um, which will take me a minute or two. So it's a good chance to go and grab maybe a cold beverage because um, I'm getting quicker at it. Yeah, so if you just put either um, your first and second choice, and then we can just like mix and match you all together. Yes, that is a good point. You don't have to stay in the same room that you're originally in. You can move around um, and try and get into all of the conversations if you wish and, um, and if time allows. So yeah, feel free to jump between rooms. And while we get your results, um, take a short break and we can just collate it all and put it into the breakout room. We should be back for 42 past five. Wow, such a weird number, but yeah. Okay, so um, Ellie, if you're there, what room would you like to be in? What um, discussion would you like to join? Oh, sorry, you're on mute. I don't mind at all. They all just sounded really interesting. So whatever makes cool. sense. Um, maybe I'll put you in support for residents. Great. Um, Bettina, you should be able to accept a room, I think. Um, and it should put you in. Alex, um, where would you like to go? Or maybe you're having your cold beverage. Um, okay. Um, Char David, could I put you in two to facilitate two, please? We don't have a facilitator there. Perfect. Um, Caitlin, you're assigned to one. So, um, Dave, can I assign you three, please? You're on mute, so I'm just going to assume that you said yes. Yeah, is that the support that I say you resident? You wanted me to uh, three, did you? Uh, although I just clicked something strange, so you might be anywhere, move to three. Yes, David, if you could be on support for ISO residents, that'd be great. Okay. Dave, you're on nighttime economy. Justine, you're... So Charlie, um, where would your assigned? Andrina, do you know, are you, would you like to be assigned to a room? I put mine in the chat. Oh, sorry, Andrina, let me have a look. Oh yes, great. Um, just quickly, would you also like me to facilitate the COVID vaccine room or just Yes, well, Luke is in there, so um, I think you could, Luke will probably have started, so you could probably go and participate, and that will free you up to feedback. Um, the support that I say is, sorry, the support oh, sorry, David. Is, is, was the category, which category was that? Sorry. Number three. Oh, right. Okay. You should, oh, sorry, David, run a lag. Um, Hi, could you, you put me in three, be, please? You are in 
three. Oh, you want to go to three? Yep, perfect. Thanks. Great. Yeah, you should be able to accept that. Yeah, thank you. Um, Alex, hello. <laughs> Hello, sorry, I was just out and about doing bits and pieces. That is quite all right. Where no, would just, you are like? we in room four now? No, no. We, we you're still in the main room. Did no, you say you wanted to go? Did I miss four, it? You did. Four. Sorry. Moving you now. Um, so okay. Charlie, I think if you could go to either four or three, that would be great. Yep. Do you need me for numbers? Because I have <laughs> I'm kind of like doing things on the side. Um, um just, you're you don't know you don't have to as long as you're back in the main chat do the military, military. um sorry i'm having a really bad day oh and this is recording i always do this <laughs> <laughs> it's fine, it. all right put me in four please i will stop stop my whining i'll then move you oh now thank you It come up? No. It might maybe you to click breakout rooms at the bottom. Aha, uh -huh. yep. Great. Oh, I get to assign myself. How strange. Oh, that's weird. Maybe because you're. Oh, because I'm special. <laughs> All right, I'll see you in a minute. See you in a bit. Hi. I was in four and then it moved me to, I think it's two. <laughs> you know, we I, think I, just tried, I think I just moved, tried to move Charlie and I messed it up. You, moved wrong. you want to be in how to make Hackney Wick a better place. Yeah, I mean, I'm happy with any of them, but I... I, I... Arrival back in of people shortly. Right, get a drink. So I think that is everyone back in so everyone's oh. back in oh. <laughs> that everyone check and then one person has to head out okay awesome so yes it will be great to kind of um for each facilitator to kind of feedback on like some key key points um i'm happy to go first <laughs> um I guess some of the things that we were just we were looking at was again our group was looking at how we engage with isolated residents. Um, initially, we began to talk about some of the things that I've already been doing. So, um, using food as a mediator to be able to kind of like reach isolated um, residents, and then from there, kind of establish a rapport and engage in that discussion. But we began to, began to look at okay, what other ways and what other issues are um, residents facing? Uh, one being this idea of um, just like activities and, 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 and exercise and feeling like they're, they're unable to do that or unable to be motivated to do that and seeing how we can help facilitate that. So whether it be um, running online sessions or signposting them to online sessions that are affordable or even free that are going on throughout, throughout the community to either um, even like creating flyers or creating their own, like, own public spaces where we can run our own, again, trainers. Um, it, other other things that we also discussed was um, for those who are are not online again how do we go about engaging them and how do we engage them with within um, COVID regulations so we're looking at again flyers um, and other mediums that we are trying to find out so if there's anyone who has any ideas please 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 please, please, please let us know um, so, so those are some of the things that we discussed and lastly just seeing how we kind of engage more young people and just people in general in, in volunteering. So how we demystify the COVID guidelines and allow for more support to be kind of brought together um, to help isolated residents. 
that's a bit of a summary from, from our, our side and we'll extend it here um, from the other groups. So who's next? I'm happy to go next, David. Um, so I was from group one, the COVID vaccine group. Um, there's a general discussion about just how travel might be organized to and from vaccine centers and what's already in place. Um, there was a lot of discussion around skepticism amongst different groups and why certain, um, just why people have skepticism and, and different reasons and what we might be able to do to figure out the exact reasons amongst different groups. Um, we also spoke about just high quality myth busting and how we might be able to share information and pool resources and, and start sharing that. Um, we, um, Kathleen has some meetings soon, so we're also going to inquire about webinars and whether it's possible to do some sort of webinar to start to disseminate information or um, just short videos. And I also just connecting with community champions and volunteers who do food deliveries to see how they can start speaking to people about vaccines and sharing more information about that as they do um, engage with people in the community. <laughs> Yeah, and that's about it for me. Um, yeah. Um, who was the next? Who was the facilitator for group one? So group one was the COVID vaccine. So um, is that Luke or can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So um, Luke was in the same group with me for so for the COVID vaccine. Okay. Um, but he had to go um, just okay. before we came back to the main room. Um, are there any other facilitators in the, in the call now? So I was number four, but I'm happy to jump in. Sure. Um, I'm not sure who was on Nighttime Economy, but um, so I was doing, um, yeah, I guess kind of outdoor activities to particularly support creative businesses, but bring, bring people together more broadly. Um, that's my attempt at <laughs> making it more succinct, but still not very. Um, so we were just kind of sharing um, initiatives that have been successful in other places. So art trails have been quite popular um, in a few places, including Dorset. They were doing an interesting thing where families were recreating scenes from movies and leaving them in their windows um, so people could then go and walk around and see each other's uh, community portraits. Polly was sharing um, a really nice example of artists doing portraits of community members, highlighting their traits and kind of good stuff they do. That was really good. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, um, there was a lot of talk around kind of how do we move opportunities online, because I think my kind of rush to get back out is maybe a little bit premature. I don't know if we're going to be able to do that for, for a little while yet. Um, yeah, and I think there's potential ways to kind of join some of those things up. So maybe as an action, we can have a look at who's doing what, because I know the yard are doing kind of activity packs. Wickwater's done various bits too. So yeah, potentially there's something there. But yeah, I've captured that in the minutes. Awesome. And then, then the last facilitator, so that was... Um, yeah, we had a brief... I wasn't sure if it carried on after I'd left. Did it carry on again? Yeah, like... we went round again, so we could add some more things, Dave, if you Okay, because the only thing we really came out with initially was, one, there's a consultation about the nighttime economy versus local residents, which pits everyone against each other, which doesn't sound a very good approach. But also that... Um, really needs to be that conversation really needs to be circulated to make sure people are aware that it's there so that's kind of what we got from initially i don't know if someone wants to ask the second time one well when we did so i was in the second group and we we would we your points were, were um discussed as well and everyone sort of agreed with that and we thought that one of the things we might take as something that could potentially be actionable was to look at creating a sort of strategic group that looks at this issue and, and some of the issues that get raised from it around sort of safety and, and actually having spaces that are relevant for all of our community, not just a small section of it, that that's a sort of strategic group with the authorities and some of the community bodies. Um, and we do it together because very often we were saying that with licensing and planning is it's you're looking at it a single site does it hit, does it meet the policy or not? Whereas actually there needs to be a bit of a helicopter view that we don't end up with 
hundreds of nightclubs because they've all met the policy guidelines, but we don't really want necessarily hundreds of nights. We want to have a balance of things in the community and, and in our space and our local economy. So um, that's something we thought, Matthew thought we could take away as a sort of an actionable thing to talk to LLDC about. Yeah, and the main, the main takeaway was obviously it's, it's, it wasn't a, a nighttime economy versus residents, it was nighttime economy and, and residents. Um, so just trying to work together and have that dialogue and try and yeah work work something that's that that, um, that everyone's happy with. So yeah, that that helicopter approach sounds really good actually. Because there's quite a few things that come up. There's you know for another town hall day, but graffiti. How do we work together on that? You know, um, supporting it in some areas and and and, um, and not in other other areas. Safety on the canals. You know, there's there's so many things that we thought it's multi-agency and lots of different views. We just need to kind of um, find a way of working together on them rather than just kind of, I guess, firefighting it every now and then. Cool, just before we round up, was, was anyone else who would like to just like feedback on some of the things that they kind of discussed or actions? <laughs> Uh, just something on the on the vaccine thing. I know probably quite a few people here are involved in voluntary stuff. And if you're meeting the elderly and the homeless, you can actually, uh, if you ring up, get vaccinated early. So maybe one of the best things to counter the vaccine thing is if the person that's delivering your food says, don't be daft, mate, I did it two weeks ago and I've been absolutely fine. Uh, just a thought that might help reassure people. So it's worth asking. Cool. Um, anyone else? Anyone else? Or <laughs> you round up? Okay. Um, well, I guess one would be thank you all for being able to come down today. Um, it's been it's it's been a long road <laughs> and we're still going through it um but amazing to be able to kind of have these discussions and share them and not just kind of see it as a place to just have a chat but also kind of have a place to take action actionable steps to make change um and it's lovely to be able to kind of have have this environment with you all um yeah i hope you have a great great evening great week um and looking forward to seeing you all um with some updates too um at the next town hall yeah, thank you for having both of us. This was a great first um, chairing for both of us. Yeah, well chaired, guys. Thank you for holding the space. Thank you. Yeah, really good session. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Thanks. Everybody, bye. All right, thanks. Bye.